getting you ready for the Locked On Podcast Network mock draft. That is coming up on this preview episode of Locked On Bucks. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this bonus episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am James Yarko, credentialed member of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com. Here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers. And for that, I want to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. I am bringing you this bonus episode to preview the upcoming Locked On Podcast Network mock draft, where myself and the rest of the hosts on the network went through the entire first round of the draft, making trades, moving around, and setting up the teams that we cover for the best opportunity possible. Now, heading into the draft, I had a list of the biggest needs for the Buccaneers with the top two being in the trenches. My top two needs, they could be 1A, 1B. You could switch them in and out however you want to approach them, but my top two were edge rusher and interior offensive line. You take a look at the edge rusher for the Buccaneers last year. Rookie Yaya Diaby led the way with seven and a half sacks, followed by Joe Tryon Shoyinka with five, Shaq Barrett with four and a half. Shaq Barrett now with the Miami Dolphins. And although the Bucs brought in Randy Gregory, that doesn't solve the problem. They have decent depth and a decent set of rotational guys, but they need to be looking for that alpha. Or if they think that Diaby can be that alpha and grow into that role in his second year, they need a guy that's going to put pressure on the other side so it isn't a one-man show. Bowles' defense is at its best when they are pinning their ears back and getting after the quarterback. So that will allow playmakers in the secondary, such as Antoine Winfield Jr., Jamel Dean, Jordan Whitehead, to be able to create opportunities and create takeaways for the defense. The Bucs just don't have that guy right now unless Yaya Diaby really takes a big step forward. Then you have the vacated left guard position where last year Matt Filer and Aaron Stinney just didn't get the job done. Robert Hainsey struggled at center with the lack of production at left guard as well as some rookie struggles by right guard Cody Malk. And I, I believe that Malk performed relatively well, and we do expect to see some improvement out of him going into year two, but the Bucks have a starting spot open and they have to solidify that line so that Baker Mayfield doesn't have to continue to be Houdini and escape sacks while Rashad White and whoever else, you know, Rashad White, Chase Edmonds, and then whoever else is brought in to that running back room, they have a rushing lane open for longer than a third of a second. The Bucks can approach this in a couple of different ways. You draft a plug-and-play guard, or you draft a plug-and-play center, which will allow Robert Hainsey to move back to guard where he excelled at Notre Dame. I think Hainsey's going to be fine at center given how he performed in 2022, but if the guards on either side of him are struggling, it brings his level of play down. He is not a guy that is going to elevate the guys on either side of him. You have to solidify those two spots. I think they're fine with Malk, but you got to solidify that left guard spot. And if you have two reliable guards on either side of Hainsey, he performs well enough to be a middle of the row serviceable starting center in the NFL. Beyond those two key positions, I was also considering cornerback. After the Bucs traded away Carlton Davis, and they currently have a lot of eggs in the we hope Jamel Dean returns to form basket, um, I looked at wide receiver so that they have a legitimate wide receiver three to line up on the outside opposite of Mike Evans while we expect Chris Godwin to return primarily to that slot receiver role where he has been so good and so effective over the course of his career. And then a wild card position that I had in mind was defensive line. Logan Hall has not developed the way the Bucs had hoped, so they can also address their their pass rush issues by taking another Kalisha Kansi type player to line up on the other side of Vita, Vita Vea giving the opposing offensive line serious matchup problems and opening 
one-on-one -on -one opportunities for those edge guys, as well as players like Antoine Winfield Jr., Levante David, Servasier Dennis, who are going to be coming in on blitzes. And by Kalijah Kansi type player, I don't mean the same player that Kalijah Kansi is. What I mean is a player that's going to be as effective as he is and really create problems for opposing offensive lines. So the players that I have my eye on heading into this mock draft were edge rushers, Leatu Latu from UCLA, Jared Verse from Florida State, and Chop Robinson out of Penn State. As far as offensive linemen, I love Graham Barton out of Duke to come in and take over that left guard spot or Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon to come in and play center. That's going to allow Hainsey to bounce back over to guard and you really solidify the rest of your offensive line. And then my wild card players, depending on how the board falls, cornerbacks Cooper DeGene out of Iowa or Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama, wide receiver Adani Mitchell out of Texas, and then that slight outside chance that Illinois defensive lineman Jerzon Johnny Newton falls to a spot where I can go up and get him, line him up on the opposite side of Vita Vea and opposite of Kalijah Kansi. That is a nightmare of a defensive line for the Buccaneers. I'm certainly not opposed to trading up to go get a guy that I feel helps this team if players like Latu versus or Newton begin to slide a little and I'm I'm going to start working the phones if I feel like I can go up and get those guys because I feel like they are game changing players that would be crucial for the Buccaneers for the next 5 plus years and if I'm if I I'm going to start making those calls and, and I have the opportunity to get one of those premier edge rushers or solidify that defensive line. I'm going to have to be able to get into the mid to late teens, or these guys are going to start getting snagged up by some of the teams ahead of me, like the Green Bay Packers, Miami Dolphins, Los Angeles Rams, Cincinnati Bengals, Arizona Cardinals. Those are some teams that I'm concerned about wanting to address their pass rush or the interior of their offensive line. If you are watching live right now, you will be sent to the debut of the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft presented by LinkedIn on our Locked On Sports Today 24-7 live streaming feed. If you are watching this after the fact, you will be able to catch the episode in which the Tampa Bay Buccaneers make their first pick right here on Locked On Bucks on Thursday, April 18th. And you can get every episode of the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft on Locked On NFL Draft on Thursday, April 18th. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As for Buccaneers coverage, again, I am your host, James Yarko, here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers. Hope you all enjoy this Locked On Podcast Network Mock Draft, and I will see you over on Locked on Bucks.